But remember, for the M1 Grand, full length size only. And uh, make sure you don't use too much um, lube. Now, while we're talking about lube, um, now don't contaminate the inside of your brass with your lube. Now, it is important when you're full length sizing them to put a little bit of lube on the inside. That's not a problem. And uh, that keeps your brass from getting stuck and you don't want to you know, you don't want to gall it trying to, you know, work it. So make it easy on yourself. There's many different kinds of lubes. I like for a full length sizing uh, to use this unique case lube by Hornady. Uh, it works really well. I actually lube my uh, shafts on my press and my trimmer with this same stuff. It stays on there. It's like a little, it's like a grease or something. But it comes off easy. You can wipe it off with a clean cotton cloth. And I use a patch on the inside to clean the inside of the case and make sure that you get it out. I have used solvents and stuff like that to try to make sure I get it out. Now I have uh, sized them and then took them back to the tumbler and tumbled them for a couple hours. And I don't even think that's necessary. Just as long as you wipe the inside out with a rag, with a cotton cloth, you'll be fine. There's many kinds of, this is the wax, imperial wax. It works good if you're neck sizing. It works fine. Full length sizing, it just is it's hard when you use a case like a 30 out 6. Now, if you're using 223, it's fine. Full length sizing. And Lee makes this. This works fine. It kind of is kind of a stickier stuff, but it does, it's water soluble. So you can wash this out with water. So if this is what you prefer, this will work fine too, because you can wash the inside out of your case and let it dry, you know, with a damp cloth. You don't want to soak a cloth and run it through there, but just a damp cloth will work fine. That's just a little trick on your on your lube there. But when you when you prep your brass, you get all your brass prepped and clean it really good. However, whatever method you choose to clean your brass. At that point, go wash your hands. Make sure your hands are oil free. Make sure you don't touch any part of the, the, of the press that has lube on it or oil or anything, because then you're going to contaminate your powder and that's bad. Now, a lot of times, and I used to do it all the time, I would mess up and have to pull a bullet and I couldn't dump the powder out. I couldn't figure out what in the world's going on here. I can't dump the powder out. Well, that's because the powder has been contaminated with something, oil, lube, or something uh, on your hand, the oil will sweat on your hand. Um, a lot of people uh, reload out in the garage. Hey, uh, I like to do it in an air conditioning spot. And you, you, you'll protect the, your equipment from rust. Um, if you have to, uh, uh, you know, bribe or whatever you need to do to get your wife to let you move inside, because you need to get all that stuff out of the moisture. And uh, even uh, it's, we're approaching summertime here, and it's real sticky outside. And I sweat. Fat people sweat like fat people like me sweat a lot. So you drip all over everything, and and that's bad. So you want to keep everything dry. So when you prep your brass, at that point, go wash your hands really good, and make sure that you're your lubes and everything are away from your powder so you can't contaminate your powder. Keep it all separate and keep your hands dry and clean. And then go ahead and trickle your powder out and measure it whatever, however method you choose to, to weigh your powder. And um, like I said, we're using 50 grains and then charge your case with the powder. And the type of bullet that, that I prefer is, are the uh, Hornady's. And this is a 150 grain. FMJ boat tail. Now these have a cantaloupe on them and works really well because I've got my row crimp die set where it makes a nice little row crimp down in that cantaloupe about halfway. And you have to row crimp them because you don't want that bullet every time it's fired, the inertia of the gun um, driving that bullet back and forth in that case. You don't want that. So you're not going to get consistent shot. shot. So um, that uh, row crimp crimp is very handy. Now Sierra, all the Met Spear, they all make a full metal jacket and I'm sure they're just fine. Um, I prefer Hornady. I've shot all of them. Hornady seems to, right now, seems to be giving me the best results. Uh, Hornady uh, was like before was one of the lower end bullet companies, but they have really come online and with quality and uh, they're really doing good things up there at Hornady. So um, I prefer Hornady. Hornady. These are cheap. They're like $18 for a box. It's pretty pretty cheap for for fun shooting. You can buy uh, bulk bullets, you know, Remington and and uh, uh, Winchester. I think theirs is 147 grain. So whatever you prefer, 
uh, I prefer Hornady, and I shoot other other bullets and other guns, and, and they're just fine. But these are um, RP brass. There's not a whole lot of difference between the brass, and you get into the Federal Premium, it's a little bit better. Um, your, your RP brass will weigh so much different, and your so will your um, uh, Winchester. That's 94.1. 94.4, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's really good actually. 94.8, so that's pretty good. Now, Winchester seems like it's the worst brass. For, for, I, I've had them weigh two to three grains difference. Brand new. Once they're trimmed and clean, it's like, ah, oh, come on. I'm trying to be a bench shooter here. This ain't working. So, I, I, stick with your RP. I think you'll have better luck. RP, uh, Federals. Uh, Federal's real good, and brass is down right now, believe it or not, so uh, get your brass now before it gets closer to the election and there's a run on stuff and you won't be able to, so, and I go through a lot of brass. So let me see, and then and then once we get these loaded, um, once I get all these loaded, then you, you put them in the in the end block, which is uh, very fun. I mean, you got you got this little clip here, and it's called the end block. And you just stick them in there real quick and uh, push them down in your gun and you're ready to go and the end block stays in your gun. Now we're going to go to the range. When I get these loaded up, then we're going to run out to the range and we're going to shoot them. And we're going to do a little group test and I think you'll be impressed. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut the camera down. I'm going to go ahead and get these eight loaded, get them in the end block and then we'll get out. I'll see you out on the loading bench. Or uh, excuse me, I'll see you out on the shooting bench. So, all right, we'll see you here in a little while.